On this video, we're going to be installing this AEM Yugo air fuel ratio meter. If you have watched my channel before, you know this is my go to gauge. Uh, I've had an Innovate Motorsports and before it worked okay, but it didn't data log the one I had. And the part number is 304110. We're going to be getting this thing on the Thunderbird and seeing what kind of uh, air fuel ratio a bone stock Super Coupe Thunderbird has before I switch this thing over to a turbocharger. I'm putting the wideband on this thing. I'm gonna try to put it here. You gotta get it in an upward angle. If you have it anywhere down, it can collect water. Here's a, a look from below at the exhaust that I have put on it. So it does have two mufflers, but it's super loud still anyway. Got that welded in, booger welded in there. Now I gotta drill a hole to run up the wires up into the gauge under the dash. So this is not gonna be a good spot when I pull the carpet back. We really need to be somewhere over here. So I'm gonna pull the fender liner out and see where our options are there to get it in there. Well, I wish there was already a hole somewhere, but there's not. So I guess we're gonna have to drill something up in here. Got a little bit of a the seam sealer and stuff peeling off where it's surface rusting. I don't like that. We'll see where we end up. So that translates to right there. In between the clutch and brake pedal. Closer to the clutch pedal. Got the wiring harness for it. This end has a little bit smaller plug, so we're gonna poke it up through there. We're gonna figure out some sort of grommet so this don't rub a hole through that. And the other end goes down to the uh, auction center. Go ahead and install the O2 sensor. Found us a rubber grommet. Keep that from rubbing through that. This feels real weird. It's uh, real foreign to me. I've never pulled a fender liner out of one of my own cars and actually put it back in later. I always just throw them in the trash. But this thing's my daily driver and I drive it in the rain all the time. So I probably should do this so I don't get water in the car. So I found a good power source. This is the ABS fuse, which has been taken out because this car has been converted over to non ABS. So I'm gonna put the uh, positive wire in there, put the end on it and plug it in. And then I'm gonna ground it right here on this ground source and we'll have power and ground for this switched. So there you go, I put a connector on the end of this, like that, plugged it into where the, the power side of the fuse is. And then uh, I know this should be fused. Uh, so if you want to do it the right way, you should probably fuse it, but I'm just gonna plug it in right there. Uh, this thing only has, it's I recommend it for a 10 amp fuse. It's a very small wire. Doesn't have a whole lot of amp load on it. So now there's our wire, wires coming out from the sensor. We're gonna run this up to the gauge and get it. I got those wires zip tied up there out of the way, stuffed up in that hole. Now we're up. So now I've got these wires run up here. This one comes from the uh, sensor and this one is your power and ground we just showed you uh, hooked up. And the blue and white wire is for outputs for like if you have a, a computer that can read the output from this so you can data log it. Like if you had a whatever, um, a mega squirt computer or something or a holly or whatever. Well, holly would probably come with its own. But anyway, we're gonna plug this gauge in now. All right, we got it plugged in. Now I'm getting a gauge pod thing for the pillar. It just hasn't showed up yet from eBay. I'm gonna power the key on and see if this thing does anything. Here we go. Let's see what our air fuel ratio is when we start. <laughs> Now this motor is already warmed up because I drove it into work. We're dead on. Well, she runs a little late. Let's make a pull down the road and see what it does. So we're cruising around, you know, it's loop looping back and forth, standing around mid 14th. Seems like it's staying in the tens air fuel, so 
so this thing's really really safe on the air fuel ratio under boost and that's with a 10 percent under driven pulley let's hit it one more time we're gonna do another third gear pull here and bought the cheapest uh, gauge pot I could find for $9 shipped. I'm gonna mount this thing up on the pillar now so we can get a better view of it. Well, imagine that, it doesn't fit. It won't go in there, so I'm gonna have to uh, open this thing up a little more to get that gauge to fit in there, I guess. It wasn't too bad after just a little bit of grinding. I only had to open it up maybe like an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch. It wasn't much. We got that in there. Now we're going to mount it up there. Not bad. Not bad. Not crazy about the fitment up here, but it'll be okay. I think that'll hang out there. There we go. That's under boost. This thing's got that Paris Hilton tune-up, apparently, from the factory. All uh, rich and retarded. So I've been driving with it for a day or two now. It stays in the mid-14 stoichiometric for gasoline pretty much all the time. Like cold starting it, uh, driving it on the highway. I notice as soon as you get over about six pounds of boost, it goes from being 14 to one straight into like the 11s and 10s. Um, I wanna drop down to fourth gear.